Okay, I'd like to bring a meeting to order. Um, this is the Historic District Commission. The date is January 13, 2022. The time is 4.15. Um, this meeting was noticed in the Fairfield Citizen on Friday, December 31st, 2021. And um, I will take attendance. Um, Parker Vanis. I'm here, Adam. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Thank you, Art. Chris Shea. Chris Shea, present. Thank you. Uh, Darren Raymond Locke. Darren Locke, present. Thank you. Rosina Negron. Rosina Negron, Commissioner. Thank you. George Clark. George was here. I don't know what happened to him. Um, Jim Bohan. I do not see Jim Bohan here. And Alyssa Stack. Alyssa Stack, present. Thank you, and Adam Claver, Commissioner, and absent at the moment is uh, Jim Bohan and George Clark. Although I saw George earlier, maybe he'll come back. Anyway, um, first item on the agenda. I'm sorry. Uh, the um, alternate alternate uh, sequence is Bohan, Clark, Stack, but I think all of the commissioners are present, so. Um, uh, the alternates will be voting unless someone accuses themselves. So we'll figure that out. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, Marshall Connell, 470 Pequot Avenue in Southport, for property located at 470 Pequot Avenue in Southport, and it's for uh, a new fence and gate. Is there anyone here representing 470 Pequot Avenue? Doesn't appear to be. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item on the agenda and so many times we'll take care of that. Uh, John and Rachel Blasch, 323 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 323 Old Post Road in Fairfield. And it's for A and new condensing units. Present. Someone here representing the Blasch. Are you? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, please identify yourself. This is John Blasky. Blasky. Okay. You're going to present your application for us? Sure, we're looking to put in um, a condenser unit to put central air in our, in our home at 323 Old Post Road. Okay. Can you share your screen um, or would you like me to share your application? I'm actually dialed in. I'm sorry, I'm at a family emergency. I can share this. I can share the application on my screen. Sorry, oh, I'm Rachel. Okay. okay. Rachel Blasky. Um, Thank you. I apologize for mispronouncing your last name. <laughs> it's a Blasky. tough one. <laughs> and it really depends on who you ask in the family, so. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, JB, I'll, I can just walk them through this. So um, I don't know how in depth you really need us to go, but um, we want to put AC in the house. So we need to put two condensers on the outside of it. Um, you can see here is the back of our home. Um, and here's the, uh, here's like the addition essentially. And there's a little nook between the addition. Um, here's where the streets run. So this is South Benson and this is Old Post Road. Um, so if it, we put it in this little nook in the corner, we're proposing we put a little bush here um, just so that you can't see these condensers that are going to be running. And, and the people have said that they look kind of, they're going to run just along our um, gutters. And we have some pictures here. So here's a more technical view. Um, and here's like an actual photo of our home and where they're going to go. And then 
Here's a photo of the condensers. And I think that's it. Any questions? Anything you want to see closer? Oh, let's ask questions of the commissioner to see if they have any questions. Um, thank you. Mark, do you have any questions? Um, just one, Adam. Um, I saw one bush uh, here on the uh, on the drawing. Um, is that the only uh, shrubbery you're going to propose to to screen the uh, condensers? No, no we're going to fully screen it with as many bushes as it takes. Okay, thank you for that. That's all I had. No problem, sir. Chris, do you have any questions? Yes, hi. Um, thank you for your presentation. On, um, there's one leader that you're going to install to hide the line sets in, and it looks like it kind of runs through the roof. Is that right, or is it going to go on top of the roof? It goes between the first and second floors. Um, there's a. I, I believe it's going to. Yeah, I believe it's going to run underneath through the roof, um, and they're going to patch that correctly and make it as tight as possible to the corner. Okay, and, and the other kind of just general comment is, I'm not even sure this is visible from a public way. It looks like it's kind of hidden in that inside corner, and I don't think you'll be able to see it from South Benson, and I am pretty sure you won't be able to see it from Old Post Road either. Yeah, that's um the only thing I, when I was standing with Adam, we were on South Benson, um, and you could possibly see the condensers, um, but without going onto our into our driveway or on our property, you won't be able to see the line at all. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. That's all I have for questions or comments. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Darren, questions? Covered my questions. Thanks for the presentation. Sure. Thank you. Rosina. No questions. Thank you. All right. George Clark and George uh, is present. Did you hear the whole uh, um, presentation, George? No, I didn't hear enough to think it's fair to. Uh, fair. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions otherwise? No. Okay. Well, let's say, do you have any questions? Melissa? You're muted, Alyssa. Okay, I guess she doesn't have any questions. All right, um, and I don't have any questions either. <clears throat> um, I was pretty familiar with the um, application. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the uh, hearing's closed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Uh, next item on the agenda is Kevin Lignac, 72 Willow Street in Southport for property located at 72 Willow Street in Southport for A, move pool from previously approved location, B, move koi pond from previously approved location, C, add outdoor shower and move jacuzzi and pool equipment from previously approved location, D, move pool fence hedge driveway. E, add golf putting green. F, change previously approved pool bluestone deck size and location. G, add bluestone paver pass, barn and around koi pond. H, add uh, one bluestone paver to entrance to existing terrace. And I, change shape to existing terrace bed adjacent to previously approved driveway. There's someone here to present 
for 72 Willow Street. Lisa, I think you have to unmute yourself. Hi, folks. Kevin's on the phone here, but uh, Lisa's going to present. Can you guys first. hear me? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Just please identify yourself first. Can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, let me just share. Um, can you see the drawing in front of you now? Yes, just please identify yourself first. Lisa Barton, yeah, okay. representing Ken Linyak. Thank you. Sure. Um, so the pool, which you see here, um, had previously been in a slightly different location, which I'm going to show you. Um, this is a little bit more confusing, but um, can you see my cursor right now? No. The screen is blank at the moment. Okay. Can you see this screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so the, the pool is in the drawing that you're looking at right now. This is the, pro the proposed location. The, um, the area that you see the red, that was the previously approved location. Is that clear to you? Yes. Okay. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is the koi pond, which you can see here outlined in red was the previously approved location. And here it is now moved slightly below. Um, the outdoor shower is proposed to be right here. Um, that was, that's just a new proposal to put that there within the setback lines, which are right here. This is a jacuzzi, which had been previously approved. We're just changing the location of where this is now. Also changing the location of this pool equipment, which is right here. Um, and because we're moving the pool, proposing to move the pool, um, we're also changing the area where the pool fencing and hedging is going to be just to accommodate that change. Um, the previous line was here in this red and the new proposed line of the fence and the hedging is right here. Um, and that subsequently changes a little bit of where the driveway is as well, as you can see. Is that clear um, to what you're looking at there? Yep. Okay. Um, and then the, um, as you can see here, this area right here, that was the original bluestone patio. And um, the new patio, much smaller here. Um, the, um, these are proposed new bluestone pavers leaving the door here and giving access to behind the pool to enter into this area here. Um, and then these, the configuration of these blue stones 
are a bit different as well. And the one additional bluestone paver is uh, right here. Before there were just two, and this um, configuration was slightly different. Um, if you can see that, that's clear to you. It says new bluestone walkway. This is from the previously approved drawing. There were these two right here, and I pulled this out a little bit and added a, a third one. Um, and then I, which is the last change here, is simply changing the line of this bed here from where I'm indicating here was where it was previously to this line right here. And, and that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the, um, the putting green, how could I forget, um, which is right here. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, Chris, you want to start? Sure. Thank you for your presentation. Um, so with the, the koi pond, did anything change to the koi pond other than the location of it? No. Um, nothing else changed. Okay. And it looks like there's one light indicated maybe in the koi pond. Was that there before? That was there before, yes. Okay. And then speaking of lighting, I don't see any lighting indicated on in your proposal. Is is the lighting um, as previously? I'm in the pool area. Or, sorry, which area are you referring to? Well, I mean, um, I'm looking at at plan L1 right now and. It looks like there's a couple of lights indicated in the pool. That's right. And maybe one in the koi pond. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of it. I don't really see any any landscape lighting. And I'm just wondering if any is proposed. Um, there, um, it had been proposed previously and it had been, um, um, you know, uh, approved, and I'm pointing it out to you right here. Um, there's a, this is the previous drawing, a new light sconce, which is in the front of the barn here. Um, there's also going to be um, a new light sconce here, which is on the side of the pool. Um, sorry, on the side of the garage barn. Um, previously proposed and approved lighting included this ground light right here, another ground light, and then lighting in front here. Um, and these are bullet type lights for these fence posts. Uh, does, and then does, some the bullet, this, does the bullet pardon? type light, is that an up light? I'm not familiar uh, with the terminology. Does that shine? Yeah. Uh, the, the specifications are on file and those were approved through the submission from Jack Franzen. And I can I can send that to you. Um, we have the specs for um, for that lighting. Okay. If, the, uh, if, 
if it was already approved and you're not uh, proposing to change it, then um, I apologize. There's no need to to tie everyone up to talk about it. So thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. Darren? Questions, thank you. Thank you. Brazina? No questions. My only question was about the light fixture, so it's been clarified. Thank you. And or uh, none from me, Adam. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, Adam, uh, no, none from Issa. Very nice presentation. Thank you, and no questions. Thank you, George. Thank you. And Alyssa. I don't have any questions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And um, I do not have any questions either. Um, did not receive no any uh, letters in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposed this application. So um, the hearing's closed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is David and Tina Montani, uh, 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, remove existing shed and basketball court, B, construct new single family home and detached garage, C, install new 20 by 40 asphalt driveway, D, install new fence along front of property, E, install new <clears throat> old Chicago used brick walkways and F install new AC condensing units. There's someone here representing 920 old post road. Yeah. Hi, Adam. It's uh, Brian St. Pierre. How are you? Hi, Brian. Good. Uh, well, happy new year, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking the time to, to hear this application. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Brian St. Pierre and I'm the owner of insight design group. Here speaking on behalf of David and Tina Montani. Um, as you're aware, there's a it's a, a new new home construction uh, that comes along with all the landscaping odds and ends as far as um, driveway mm -hmm. and AC units, so on and so forth, which we'll get into. Um, but first, I just want to say I'm I'm happy to be here in front of you guys. Um, this is. What I think is an exciting project. Um, obviously, to be a part of it is is exciting for me. Um, and I will say, to start the project, not only myself but but Tina and and David are very open to not only suggestions but comments from not only the board but also the uh, public in general for suggestions on what to do to make this project the best project that we can make it. We understand the high nature and, and profile of this project. And I mean, it is a new home in, in, in a historic district, which kind of seems like an, an oxymoron, but um, let me just basically give you some, some brief background. I'm not sure, I'm sure some of you know, uh, David and Tina actually had already uh, owned a home on Old Post Road, actually, two or three houses down um, and since sold that home and, and loved the area so much that they wanted to move back and, and be a part of, of this neighborhood um, in, in Fairfield. So you'll probably hear me say a lot today uh, in regards to this project, you know, in keeping with the neighborhood. And that really is our intention with this project. Uh, we, we, love not only myself but also the montanis love fairfield we love the old post road area um and appreciate the historic nature of it so when i say you know in in keeping with the neighborhood sure we we really are trying to keep you know the historic nature and the and the character and and loveliness of, of old post road in general so David and Tina bought the home, uh, or I'm sorry, the property uh, roughly about a year ago. And they, in doing so, they were obviously looking for other homes um, also. 
And I'm going to show you, I'm going to put up one screen here, a picture of a home. Um, and I'm only showing you this as, as reference, um, because it was a home that David and Tina fell in love with, um, as they were looking for a new home. And, and once the property came about and sorry about that. Everybody see that? Yeah. So once the once the home uh, once the property came about and they decided to to build the new home on Old Post Road, this house that they had fallen in love with uh, kind of came back into their laps. Not only for the aesthetics and the character of the home, but also the um, what I call the layout or the orientation of the of the house. Um, it it suited their very oddly shaped piece of property. Um, and by that, I mean, it's not your typical center hall or, you know, center uh, hallway colonial. Um, it, it fits that oddly L shaped property, uh, that the Montanis have there on, on old post road. So I want I'm showing you this only because it's a, as a reference and there's a lot of characteristics and a lot of um elements of this house that we plan to incorporate into the new house of, of Tina and, and David. So getting into the project, um sorry, I'm trying to Zoom meetings are are new to me too. <laughs> Um, getting into the project, basically, um, we start off the project with the removal of the existing shed and the existing basketball court that are currently on the on the property. I mean, give me one second. I'm just trying to share this. survey with you. Okay, so the, this is the property. Um, I'm sure you guys have the, the survey there yourselves, but our, our proposal starts with the removal of the shed in the very rear of the new property for David and Tina, and also the uh, large basketball court that is kind of in the center and, and shares uh, some space with the, with the neighbor there. Um, those, I'm not sure how much detail we need to get into those will obviously be, de uh, demolished or, or removed from the property, um, down to grade level and obviously, you know, start with a clear, a clean slate of, uh, a cleared piece of property. Um, that demolition of those 2 pieces will take place during the excavation period of the project. So prior to any home being built prior to, you know, any mechanicals or, or electrical services brought in, uh, this will be part of, you know, the 1st stage, the 1st step in our, in our process here. Getting into the house itself. Can you see the drawings or the survey? I'm sorry, guys. I'm. You see the drawing. The you see the drawings. Okay. Oh, cool. So as we started the the process of trying to design a home for this this piece of property, obviously, one we had that reference home that that we were, um, I'll say, imitating. Uh, or, or had in our mind as, as a style and a, and a, um, layout that the Montanis, uh, were happy with. In walking and, and driving around the neighborhood, really what I'm trying to do is find, you know, the, the common characteristics of the old, of old post road. And we're all familiar with the property or familiar with the area. You know, I, I went to school in Fairfield and, and I was, I know the area very well. Um, but I, I really wanted to 
take bits and pieces of the immediate neighborhood and, and try and incorporate them into this project. And by that, I mean, as we were designing, do we use gable roofs versus, versus hip roofs? Um, it seemed that, you know, the surrounding neighborhood, almost every single home in the neighborhood had a gable roof. So putting a, putting a hip roof didn't seem fitting. Uh, things like wood siding versus, you know, a stone house or a, or a brick house, uh, just keeping in character with the neighborhood and and matching you know the surrounding homes and 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 the uh, characteristics of the of the road itself so g getting into the exterior of the home this is this is a picture of the um picture of the front of the house and I'll get into, I'm sure there's going to be a, a ton of questions and I'm sure I'm not going to get through all of all of the details of the home, but we basically have a, uh, what I'll call a mixture of a, of a colonial and, and, um, and craftsman style house. Um, this is very in keeping with, with what's in the neighborhood now. Uh, as you can see, we have a main, main gable. It's a two story home. Um, main gable over the, over the majority of the house with an accent gable on the front here. Um, all double hung windows, uh, six over six, very keeping. Um, and it, you know, the nice front portico with a copper roof, so on and so forth. Um, there's also a two car uh, detached garage uh, to the side there, uh, wood, wood um, garage doors and dormers to fit um, you know that carriage house style of uh, of a garage that there is as far as materials go uh it's going to be your pretty your standard uh you know historic materials um we're going with the you know six inch uh wood siding or um flatboard siding throughout the house with um six inch corner or i'm sorry four inch corner boards cedar corner boards uh, around the building at each corner. As I mentioned, the, the windows are all double hung uh, in the house, uh, six over six. They are Pella Architecture Series windows, uh, all wood inside and out um, with simulated divided light. Um, they don't actually make a true divided, but simulated divided light. Um, and if there is to be, there will be the spacer between the glass to, to emulate that that um, simulated divided. It, um, they will not be snap-ins um, for some, some windows have the snap-ins, these, these won't be the snap-ins. But they will be Pella Architect series, uh, fully wood window with uh, historic sill on them, which is the, wood, the thick wood sill that they add to the bottom of the, of the uh, wood window itself. On the windows, we are proposing uh, wood um, wood shutters. Sorry, uh, they'll be painted uh, painted wood, but but solid wood. Um, the I can show you guys if you give me one second. I think the cut sheets, I'm not sure if you guys want me to go through all the cut sheets and everything since you have them there, but um, there are the cut sheets on, on not only the windows, but also the, the uh, shutters themselves. <laughs> the front door is a single three foot door with a transom along the top and two side lights on either side. It's a mahogany door uh, and mahogany sill with the same simulated divided lights uh, to match the windows that, um, that come standard on the doors. We have a front portico with, um, I believe we did 10 inch, sorry, uh, the 10, 10 inch columns, they're wood columns, custom columns. Uh, there is a detail of how we plan to do the columns.
right there. So your traditional um, wood uh, square wood column, 10 inch uh, with the crown on the top and the little neck mold uh, approximately 10 inches down and the base, uh, base cap all made out of wood uh, and painted uh, white. Also on the front of the house, um, as I mentioned, the portico itself will um, have a copper roof, a standing seam copper roof on it. And the um, crown is your typical crown. I believe I have a detail of that too in the drawings. This is your typical overhang detail um, for not only the, the main gables of the home, but also for uh, the crown that we're gonna be using on the, on the front entry. The roof is an asphalt uh, three tab shingle roof. Um, it, we went with a, a darker gray uh, called slate color, um, but your tr traditional three tab asphalt shingle roof, um, not only on the main gables, but on the little return gable or the return uh, roof line here that you see on the front of the house um, on that decorative gable. As for the portico itself, there it, we are making we are doing a brick portico um, used out of the old old Chicago brick. Uh, we thought that was a, a an appropriate brick uh, for the project, not that um, fire engine red brick. It's a it's a more muted and and used looking brick. Um, very traditional in in this area of uh, of Fairfield and. You know, rather than go with uh, any traditional or I'm sorry, any uh, modern materials, we obviously opted for the for the brick to not only be on the face of our front portico, but also our walkways that lead from the front door to the driveway and then from the front door to the front um, street, um, Old Post Road in the front. As I mentioned, you'll have your you have your typical overhang detail. Um, it is a flat fascia. Uh, everything on the on the uh, overhangs and fascias are all wood material. Um, your typical crown molding on top of your flat um, flat fascia with a little band molding underneath and your freeze board uh, underneath. Other items that are on the front elevation, front and side elevation, we are proposing a uh, hanging light from the underside of the front portico. Um, it's your typical pendant light, which uh, is, is made out of copper and or has a copper look with clear glass. And it is a, a down pendant light. Uh, that hangs, you know, roughly six to eight inches from the from the ceiling line of the uh, porch itself. I believe I have the specs in, in the, the um, packet also. If you'd like me to go through the that picture, we can. The other two lights are going to be over the each of the garage doors. They're more of your um, gooseneck looking light and also of the copper material they are roughly 14 inches as, as a shade and the gooseneck itself is about uh 10 inches or so uh sticking out centered over each of the garage doors on the garage doors themselves um as i mentioned they're they're wood garage doors uh with uh light um i'm sorry glass above and panels below um, they're a, a clope uh, door, they're wood, all wood door, um, and those will be stained uh, same as the as the front door to be, um, I'm sorry, yeah, to as as wood and, and to be kept as a natural natural color. Um, 
going back to the brick, sorry, I'm jumping around here. Uh, going back to the brick, we will also be using that old Chicago used brick on the uh, fireplace uh, chimney. That's up in the top left hand corner here. Um, this chimney just sticks out of the roof, uh, the three feet, and then has your, your typical flagstone top um, and, and cap the, that we would have. In addition, just looking at the I think that covers just about everything on the house. Oh, also on in select areas, uh, we won't be using them on the whole house, but we are going to be using um, half round gutters uh, in certain locations. Here is a detail of, of the um, aluminum half round gutters. Uh, they'll be white uh, to match the trim and like I said, they're you know your traditional six inch uh, half round half round gutter. Going back to some of the <laughs> exterior features of the house uh, that obviously, sorry about that, that go along with um, the building of the new home is going to be uh, a new, we propose a new at, um, asphalt paved driveway. Uh, it's your typical blacktop um, driveway. In keeping with you know most of the neighbors that that are are there, um, the apron will also match that that um, I'm sorry that black top uh, look asphalt look. The driveway itself is approximately twenty feet wide by forty feet long, um, from the side basically from the sidewalk, not from the street itself. So it's actually maybe a little bit bigger um, going from the edge of the pavement. You can see that here. Um, we have our sidewalk. I think there's a, then there's a grass area in between the road and the sidewalk. And obviously we have our driveway. As I mentioned, the walkways coming off the front portico, you're coming onto the driveway. So we have a, a brick walkway there and a brick walkway also to the sidewalk itself. At the end of that walkway, um, at the sidewalk, we will have a gate. Um, we're also proposing a, a new fence that will stretch from one corner to the other corner of the front of the property, with the only break being for the driveway itself in the middle. And as I mentioned, at the end of the at the end of the walkway, uh, we will have a, a gate to get out, obviously, and 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 into the into the property. <clears throat> the fence itself is the what I'll call the the old post road fence. Uh, it, it seems like every single property on the on the street has the same exact fence. Uh, we put a little detail and and some pictures of what the fence is and and the surrounding neighbors that have this this picket fence. Um, but it's your typical, you know, three foot high. The post itself goes about three and a half feet, and you know your your typical spacing between typical um, inch and a half uh, spindles. And like I said, it, it's it's the same fence that everybody on Old Post Road seems to have. <laughs> um, let's see, we are also proposing. As part of the project, it, there is um, two condensing units for the AC. Uh, we're going to be putting obviously an AC into the new home. Those two units are going to be tucked behind this little alcove that we have, uh, this little niche on the right, I'm sorry, left back side of, of the uh, house here. We don't believe it's going to be viewed at all from uh, Old Post Road or, or any walkway. There, there is a fence along this side of the property and, and heavy shrubbery to begin with. If we do need shrubbery, if, if, if we think there's going to be a, you know, a, uh, a site of these units, we will obviously uh, put some shrubbery along the 
uh, side here to, to block those units. Uh, it would be your arborvitae type of, you know, heavy thick green um, screening shrubs. In addition, we are also going to have a row of arborvitaes that we are going to be putting along the right side of the property. Um, currently, if you can see um, from some pictures, let me see if I can get them here. Everybody see that photo of the property? No. Okay, let me Let's see the survey. <clears throat> okay. This is a picture of the existing property. Uh, Old Post Road kind of runs this way. As you see where the where the car is, that's the existing neighbor's garage uh, that faces Old Post Road. You can see the basketball courts uh, that are currently there and the shed is is in the back. I, I don't believe it's visible from this picture. But we we will be lining this property line um, with a row of arborvitaes. Uh, we're gonna start at six feet tall. Um, And you can kind of see it here. Uh, do you see the rendering now? No. Uh, no. Uh, one second. Sorry, now I'm not sure what happened here with the. <clears throat> you might have to stop sharing and reconnect. Yeah. Sorry, I lost all you guys. Give me one second. <laughs> Stop sharing. Okay, sorry. There you go. Okay, so the... Uh, I apologize. I, I lost I lost my screen here. Um, you want me to share it for in you? In terms of the um, in terms of the screening, uh, it, it'll be the row of arborvitaes, and we believe not only will that um, separate the two properties, obviously for for privacy reasons, but it, it also coming down Old Post Road, um, we believe it'll screen some of the the garage and and house. Uh, from your public walkways um, also. In addition, I do want to show you the survey again. Let me see if I can get this up. Okay, can you see the survey? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so the there's it, as I mentioned in between the edge of the road and the sidewalks, there are there is a, a strip of grass with uh, oak trees or maple trees that are lining um, this property. There's 
roughly one over here right on the right corner there's roughly one right at the edge of the driveway here and there's another run roughly um here in the front those trees obviously will remain untouched we are we do not intend to remove those trees the the only thing that will be removed from the front of the property is the the row of hedges that are there now that that screen obviously the um the property from old post road to begin with and in doing so we believe it opens up the not only do we need to but we believe it opens up the property to meet the character of the neighborhood every every other home on that property is visible from the road uh with the fence in in front of it and we believe this that keeps it within the uh, character of the neighborhood and lastly i'll just say the the home itself the placement of the home itself um i tried to get the surveyor to to put this in but it sits if not um flush about 10 feet back from what we'll call the the street line uh, of the row of houses that that's on this road uh, most of them with the exception of the one right next door um are all pretty much in the same line we believe we're right in line with that with uh all the other houses and um basically just in keeping so it's not it's not too too close to the street, not too far away where um where the symmetry of the of the road gets um gets messed up. So with that, I'm sure there's a ton of questions. Um I'm happy to answer them. And that's it. Thank you very much for uh for hearing it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Rosina, would you like to start? Is it my turn or is it Darren? I thought we were going ARG, Chris, Darren. No, I'm just, I have a list that I'm going through and you're next. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Would you like Darren to go first? I can go first. No problem with that. Um, thank okay. you for the presentation. Um, I do have a lot of questions, um, mainly on the site plan. Um, I was wondering if um, the neighbors were at any point um, kind of consulted or asked about any of the proposals that you guys are putting forward. Um, also, the main concern is that the basketball court is shared between Two properties. It's not only the Montanis property, but it's also um, if you go into the site plan, it's part of it. Like a third of it is the Olivieris. So that's kind of one concern that, um, in general, um, I have in case that the neighbors were not consulted or um, something like that. Um, you also mentioned um, that the home that you guys chose, it's imitating a home in a different neighborhood. It sort of feels that it's not the character of the streetscape. Um, it would be nice to see the entire streetscape, not only the house itself, but how it fits with the other properties that are adjacent to it. Um, that, in the presentation, it's completely missing. And even in the presentation, the photos that were submitted of um, the neighboring houses, the one house that's adjacent and the most historic house on the street was completely removed from the streetscape. So it will be important to have all the houses shown um, in the presentation. Um, you also mentioned that you guys were choosing common characteristics of all post road. It doesn't seem that the proposal is in keeping with the common characteristics of all post road. For example, none of the um, houses in all post road that actually have a frontage onto all post road have a garage adjacent to the house. 
most of the garages are to the back of the property, um, not in view from the street. So that is one thing that it's really not in keeping with the streetscape of Opus Road. Um, another thing that you mentioned is the um, setbacks. If you look at, if you were to put all the houses together that are on the street and you look at the setback, the minimum setback that all the houses, with the exception of the two oldest ones in this, um, the 920 end of Opus Road, are between 45 and 50 feet um, setback from the sidewalk. If you look at the survey that you provide, you can see where the garage of 880 Opus Road aligns, and it's further back. So your comment of you guys are in keeping with the streetscapes and the setbacks, it's kind of not correct, at least in my opinion. Um, what else? Uh, for example, what else is there? In the HDC guidelines, there is a statement that says new construction shall be designed so that the views from the public ways of the existing buildings and the structures is undiminished to the extent possible. Uh, for example, a new construction will often need to be lower in height and with less massing and bulk than the existing buildings and structures so that the view of this existing structures from the public way is protected. Um, it kind of feels that there's a little bit of a disregard of the ad um, adjacent properties in the design um, overall. Like for example, the last property that was built, brand new property that was built in Opals Road was um, 965. And that house doesn't have a garage adjacent to it, has the garage to the back of the property, has a 55 foot setback from the sidewalk, and it's in keeping with the neighboring properties. So, it would be nice to see something not similar to that, but in the same manner that it respects the um, streetscapes and the adjoining properties. Um, I appreciate all the detail that you gave about the house and the materials, but my main concern is the setback, the garage, and <laughs> that it basically fits in the streetscape. So that's some of my comments at the moment. So thank you. Thank you, Rosina. I I, I appreciate that. Um, not sure where to start with all the answers, <laughs> but um, I'll start with the first one that you had was were the neighbors contacted. Um, I know the Montanis have had conversations with neighbors that they know. And also we reached out to the head of the old post road association uh, on two, actually three different occasions, uh, two emails and one phone call. And we did not receive any, any callbacks or anything uh, from him. We, we did want to present this to them prior. We, we actually pulled the application uh, several months ago uh, in order to do that. And it was our intent. And unfortunately with, without getting responses, and the time frame that the Montanis have, obviously they're in a rental home. So we're trying to, not, not that we're rushing through this for any reason whatsoever, um, but obviously they're, they would like to get out of their rental and into their dream home. So it, it was just a matter of timing uh, that we weren't able to connect with them, um, but we will, um, obviously we are open, as I mentioned in the beginning for any conversation. Can I interrupt for a second? Yep, go ahead. Um, I am actually the adjoining neighbor. I used to be the Montani's old neighbor when they lived in 970 Opus Road. They actually have my contact information. They actually came to me for a garage proposal that they had in 970 for me to kind of give them some input before submitting it to HDC. So not to have been contacted at all, 
for a new project when there were no issues when they left 970. It was a little bit um, bizarre. And speaking to all the other neighbors, it was strange to say that they tried to contact um, Opus Road Association and the neighbors when nobody heard. So my apologies for interrupting you, but no, um, and, I just and, had to put full disclosure. I'm an adjoining neighbor. No, no, I we I knew that <laughs> I was prepped on that, um, and and I'm okay uh, <laughs> with, with with that scenario. And and yes, I one I want to apologize if if people weren't contacted, it really was in our in our best interest and and our intention to contact neighbors and and like I said, the Old Post Road Association. Um, which I'll even show you the emails that I sent to Dr. Backy, I think is his name. Um, but it is what it is. I, I apologize. And, um, you know, like I said for, in the beginning of this, we are open to any suggestions, not only now, but, but you know, before construction or before anything else is, is um, you know, decided on for recommendations on what to do with the property. In terms of the garage, um, I knew, obviously, I've read the, the, uh, the um, handbook myself, I, I'm very familiar with it. I know it, it says in there to the best of your ability to, to try and hide these garages uh, from plain sight. And with that, I'm, I'm, I'll say kind of two things. One is, not, well, we were. We, we, we were stuck with the location of the garage being on Old Post Road due to the irregular shape of the property. Um, if I were to hide this garage kind of in the back of that L, what I'll call the L shape, um, part of the property, not only would it not conform to any of the building setbacks, uh, that we have because of the size of the garage and, and how it narrows down so much, um, there where, where the L part, you know, bend in the L would be, um, but. In doing so, if I if I was able to get the garage to the back of the house, it left us with a, a house footprint of like 600 square feet, where I thought it was more important to keep the character of, uh, and when I say character, I mean keep the keep the aesthetics of the new home in in keeping with size. In other words, you know, I, I, the last thing in the world I wanted to do was was put a little 1,000 square foot cape. On this piece of property in a historic neighborhood with with three or four thousand square foot houses, um, you know, surrounding it, I thought that was more of a, you know, more of a slight on the on the character of the neighborhood versus put, having a garage facing and, and being viewed from from Old Post Road. So, one obviously, it, it it's a logistics, a, a, a survey, a plot plan problem um, where there was no way I, it, without several variances and, and you know, and, and I can assure you one of the variances would have been bringing the house closer to Old Post Road without doing extensive variance work. There, there was no way for us to get a, a garage behind the house with a driveway along your side of the property, Rosina. Um, and and still keep a house that was basically a buildable house. Uh, it it would have ended up being about a thousand square feet, two full, you know, a two story thousand square foot house. Um, in terms of keeping with the neighborhood, not that I disagree with you because I I, I have driven around and I I do know the majority of the garages are behind, um, but there are several instances of the garages on Old Post Road being on the garage or on the street side. Uh, I'm going to try and give you try and share these these pictures with you. But the the house numbers are 455, 480, 487 and 515 Old Post Road. And all of those homes which are obviously in, within on Old Post Road and within the district have garages that are on the front of the house viewed from a you know a, a public walkway and facing facing the street 
I apologize, I didn't write down which numbers these were, but here's one instance. This is one of the houses on Old Post Road. I, I think you're seeing these, these photos, correct? Yeah. Uh, this is one. This is another one, um, you know, basically similar to, to the location and and relation of the garage to, to our home from old uh, of our piece uh, from Old Post Road. We also have this one, which, as I mentioned, is on Old Post Road. And then this one, the, a two car with actually a, a second story above. So I, I understand where you're coming from and I and I get it. And the the issue with us not only is it the logistics of of the placement of the garage but we do we do think that it is within keeping from these examples of um of the of, of garages facing and, and being present on a on a main walkway or a main or main street um most of those garages are further back than the proposal that you guys are putting forward. Um, sadly, the Sherman Parsonage is one that um, creates a precedent, which is very sad because it, it doesn't fit um, with the streetscape, um, in my opinion. But um, it's that. The other thing, having a garage adjacent to another garage, that's really not typical in old post roads and it creates kind of that corner of the YMCA and 880 sort of traffic and making a, a adjacent curb cut to an, an existing garage might be a little bit problematic, but just my opinion. I understand completely. I 100% agree. And, and like I said, it, it's really the the odd shape, you know, and 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 property that we're given here with with fitting a house and and garage within within setbacks and not having to go for variances and so on and so forth. So noted. I I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, all I can say is I I, I think we fit in a in a in a spot that you know not only works for the property but also for for the Montanis. I mean, you know, we there's really no other spot we can put it where they can have a, a home that is buildable and usable. Understood. Um, one more thing, the um, stockade fence that is now not visible from the street will become visible once you guys remove the hedge. There is nothing in the proposal about that Stockade fence. Is that something that um, was missed in the proposal, or is that something that you guys are just not looking into? No, it, it, it actually, I, I, it, it was left out of the uh, proposal, and I apologize for that. And the only reason was is that it's shared not only on this property, but it looks like it also goes on onto your property on the side. And I figured that was a, a a discussion that needed to happen between not only yourself and the Montanis, but if it's going to be repaired, you know, how do we repair it, so on and so forth. You know, pulling back those shrubs, I'm not sure what condition you know it, it's going to be in once we once we open that up. And I figured that would be something that we could come back to the board um, and do. Okay, I think. Those are some of my questions and comments. I will take any more time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rosina. <clears throat> thank you, Rosina. Darren, do you have any questions? I'm glad Rosina went first because she addressed most of what I had to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's one comment that I, I do want to make, and it kind of piggybacks on some of Ro Rosina's comments on the garages. The garages that you presented as being within the Old Post Road district are very much subservient to the main houses. Not only are they usually pretty small comparatively, like a story and a half, maybe in one case there was a two story, but they're very much vernacular structures. They're not as designed, they're, they're less detailed, they're much plainer. Um, in many of those cases, there's one that has like a little bit of Greek revival to it, but most of them, 
very much stands subservient to the main house. And in the case of what you're presenting, I don't feel like you're achieving that same look and that same characteristic, which is something that is, as you say, prevent, prevalent in this district. So um, that's the one comment I'm going to kind of leave here. Excellent. Thank you. I, and and I will take that back to the Montanis. I mean, that's that's something that we can discuss. And as I mentioned, we will we'll take any suggestion, any comments, you know, to make this project better. Um, Just you know, look at the massing between the garages you presented as being extant and the main houses and look at the garage you're presenting is just very much there and it's very yeah. present and it's big comparatively. So that's just the one comment I have. Gotcha. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Darren. Chris? Brian, thank you for your presentation. Um, I also have some concerns about the massing, um, the location of the proposed residence, as well as the massing of the garage and the location of it. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering if you could if you could talk to me a little bit about the the height of the existing building and compare it to the height of the adjacent buildings. Sure, by existing building, which-, which I'm building? sorry, I meant to say the proposed- uh, Proposed, the new okay. proposed dwelling compared to the adjacent dwellings, the height of those. Yeah, uh, and I and I think that's, thanks, Chris. And, and I think I'm gonna, you know, I'll have to circle back because I, I don't actually have the, the height I think it goes kind of back to Rosina's question of seeing this within the whole streetscape and, and trying to compare it to, to all the other houses. Um, but what I could tell you is, is that, you know, the height of this home, in my opinion, without putting a tape measure on other houses, actually is, is probably less tall than the ones across the street. Um, those are very you know, tall uh, gables and we're going with the standard, you know, eight foot ceiling heights, um, you know, with the, with the roof lines landing on the, on the attic floor. So, I mean, it, it if it's, if it's a couple feet taller, I'd, I'd be shocked, but I, I actually think it might be, you know, a couple feet shorter in, in height than most of the surrounding homes. Uh, obviously, you know, in comparison to the garage that's that's to the right um, of the of the property uh, that that shared you know the basketball court that that garage I mean obviously you know that that's a single story you know almost flat roof kind of <laughs> kind of garage um, so it, yeah in terms of the massing I'm I'm actually very happy and comfortable with with how it would relate to the other homes. Um, and and like I said, it's not like we're going ten foot ceilings on the first floor, and you know nine foot on the second floor, where this this roof line just keeps creeping and creeping and creeping. Um, we're going with the standard eight foot, you know, throughout the home. The um, you know, the handbook um, discusses you know design guidelines for proposed new um, buildings in in the district and. You know, it mentions um, new construction will often need to be of a lower height with less massing and bulk than existing buildings and structures so that the um, view of the existing structures from public ways is protected. I, I'm not sure that you've achieved that. Um, and then it goes on to say that um, Garages and other outbuildings shall complement the architectural style of the main building that they are intended to serve and be cited so as to be visually unob uh, unobtrusive from a public way as possible. And I don't think you've achieved that either. Um, so, I mean, I, for one, would like to see, um, as Rosine has already requested, maybe a streetscape rendering of um, 
of this proposed building um, with the adjacent buildings. Uh, and I'd also like to see some um, posts installed on the site to indicate the height of the ridge and the corners of the structures so that we could um, visit the site and see that. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And and by, you know, you mean stake out the, the corners of the house, correct? In, in other words, kind of show how, how far it sits back from the from the street, so on and so forth. That That's the request? Well, um, you know, I mean, Adam might be able to speak to that a little bit more, but I know in the past we've held special meetings to actually view posts uh, that are installed to give us the actual height. So if it, if your ridge is at 30 feet, the the posts would be at 30 feet, so we could see the actual height of the of the proposed roof line. Okay. <clears throat> that's that's it for me. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Art, do you have any questions? Um, I, I, I think a lot has been brought up already, so uh, I, I don't have any additional questions to add. Thank you. Thanks, sir. George. Uh, thank you for your presentation and I don't have any additional questions. I think it's been well covered. Thank you. Thanks, George. Melissa. My questions have been addressed. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Melissa. And Jim Bohan, um, I believe, uh, joined the meeting before this application started. Jim, do you have any questions? No, I uh, I uh, came in late, so I, 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 I'm really not in, in a position to, to vote on it. But thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, <clears throat> Oh, well, um, Brian, obviously there's a lot that has been, been brought up uh, regarding this application. Um, one thing that I noticed is the, the cut sheets for uh, windows um, call out for Duraclad windows. Um, I know they're wood, but then it says Duraclad, which is a finish they, they put on the outside. Um, I'm not sure if that's an actual cladding or if it's paint. Um, uh, but but anyway, it definitely it's it needs to be uh, addressed and and just made sure that the windows are wood and they're going to be primed and painted on site and not uh, not delivered finished as a clad that, unit. That that, um, that is the case. That is the case, Adam. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Unfortunately, Pella okay. just doesn't have a cut sheet because the profiles are exactly the same in the clad as the wood. They they didn't have a cut sheet for me. Uh, to show, it, it, even though it says in Duraclad, it's the same profile, and that's what I was trying to uh, provide you guys in the spec sheet was to see the simulated divided with the with the profile and and how the window is constructed. But I assure you, like I said in the application and uh, and on the drawings here, uh, they are wood windows uh, inside and out to be primed and painted uh, on the outside. And I, I can I can go back to the to the Pella rep and and see if I can. Get something that's, you know, it doesn't have that Duraclad wording yeah. in it, <laughs> and and get that over to you. If, well, yeah, I mean, we'd make a, that stipulation in in the motion um, that that doesn't have to be the case. Um, um, the idea of poles being brought up um, by Chris, I think, is a good idea. We have done that in the past, where we've had, um, you know, poles erected on the site to sort of give the commission a sense of the scale of what you're proposing. Um, so that I think um, that that would probably be a, a good idea. Um, and if, you know, but anyway, um, the other thing I noticed was a discrepancy between the, the elevations and the site plan with respect to the location of the garage in the house. Um, I mean, it just looks like the garage, just looking at the site plan, the garage is, is about 2.4 feet away from the house, which is 
I, I don't think he can. In one on site, the garage that close to the house, I mean, and and your elevation shows it as being four feet from the house, which is really close as well. So, um, and maybe that that speaks to the, the massing of this garage, which I I also have, have an issue with. I think it's it's a massive, um, you know, just the roof line looking, and maybe it's a two D elevation makes it look worse than it is, but. Um, you know, it's like two thirds the height of the, the the main house. It's it's pretty tall. Um, you know, and there are ways you can reduce the height by reducing the pitch of the roof. You know, versus I know you want to have a four floor height. You can also you know have a dormer second floor versus a you know a full second floor with a attic. Um, there are ways to reduce the, the massing of of the main house and the garage, um, for sure. Um, okay, so I don't really have any other questions. Just, I mean, I think the commission really um, had a lot of comments and questions. Um, I do have some letters to to read. Um, these are um, I didn't receive any letters in favor of the application, but I did receive some letters in opposition of the of the application, which I'm going to read into the record. So. They're, they're kind of lengthy, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, this one's from Ann Cadis um, to the Historic District Commission. We are writing to express our concern regarding the proposed new construction at 920 Old Post Road. To research this issue, we have read and reviewed the Historic District or the Historic Commission Handbook and the final report for the formation of the Fairfield Historic District from 1962. As the proposal sits, we ask that the commission vote to deny approval for the following reasons. And one of the four criteria the committee that created the historic district relied upon the choosing properties to include was consideration of the area as a whole to provide an appropriate setting. The size of the proposed structure is as large as possible for the plot of land and does not take into consideration the area as a whole to provide an appropriate assimilation for the historic district. The proposal has the front step to mere 25 feet from the property line. This is in contrast to each of the other houses on this block, which have 40 foot setbacks. The only exception to this being the house next door to 920, the prestigious Roland house at 925 Old Post Road. The Roland House was built in 1750 and survived the burning of Fairfield in 1779. This jewel of Old Post Road should be preserved as a stand-out example of history, not dwarfed by a new building next door. The committee who created the, of the historic district also took into consideration broad cultural, political, economical, and social historic values exemplified by structures or places that are identified with historic events or Personages. It is our opinion that placing a as large as possible structure directly next to the most historic home on the block will diminish the value of that home from an historical standpoint. Additionally, page 55 of the Historic District Handbook states that established rhythms and location, height, and bulk of structures along the street should be maintained. New construction, therefore, shall be setback from the street and side yards in proportion to the to setbacks of adjacent buildings. Each of the homes on this block and along Old Post Road generally are known for their spacious lawns. The current proposal puts this new construction, including two large air conditioned units, which look from the drawing that they will be less than seven feet from the property line, a mere seven feet from the fence on one side and the garage will be 10 feet on the other. The building will look like it is wrenched into the spot, making it inappropriate for the historic district. We are proud to live in the district, which we consider a living library of our town and a place that we need to protect. We fully understand the hardships that can come along with construction in this district. We also understand that someone who would like to construct a home here, however, we would not be good stewards of our property and the district as, as a whole if we did not voice our objections to the plans as they were submitted. And in Peter Case, 996 Old Post Road. The next letter is from Karen Olivieri. 
to a concern. This letter is respectfully submitted to articulate several concerns and or comments regarding plans and specifications prepared for the application of certificate of appropriate data. December 22nd, 2021 for 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield. Number one, improvement location survey. Um, somebody needs to mute their mic. It's, I think it's George. Not, not getting a lot of background. Um, thank you. Uh, number one, improvement location survey drawing. This drawing indicates a dotted line for the basketball court to be removed. The dotted line extends beyond the property line encroaching my property. This is not acceptable. Please revise the drawing to indicate the following. A, identify the portion of the basketball court to remain, namely the portion on my property. B, identify the means and methods to be utilized to maintain the integrity of the existing basketball court subsurface and playing surface that will remain on my property. C, provide details, if any, regarding any proposed treatment example, plantings or fence along the property line. Two, improvement location survey drawing, the massing of the new resident and garage does not appear to be consistent with the size of the property. Although it may be compliant with zoning regulations, consideration should be given to reducing the size of the garage or relocating it to the rear of the house. Number three, drawing A1, the two car garage shown in this drawing may not be able to accommodate two cars as the pedestrian door Leading into the garage will hit the car in the garage. We have a garage with similar dimensions and it is impossible to park two cars in the garage, as well as providing storage for the refuse containers and other items. Although you may be able to fit two cars in the garage with no storage room, opening the car doors should be problematic. Very truly yours, Karen Olivier. Um, Next uh, letter is from Jennifer Dewher. Here is she chairperson. We'd like to go on record that we oppose the planning, building, and garage being proposed for 920 Post Road as a piece of our property abuts this space. We appreciate, appreciate you taking our opposition into account when carefully considering this proposal. Thank you for your diligence. Sincerely, Michael and Jennifer Dewher, 47 West Morgan Ave, Fairfield. The next letter is from uh, Mr. Richard Cunningham, 952 Old Post Road. To Mr. Clyburn, I'm writing you for a second time in opposition to the proposed construction of a new home and double garage on the subdivided and rotated lot at 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield. I was disappointed to learn with the resubmission of this proposal that the applicants had not seized the opportunity to address the material concerns raised previously by my neighbors and I. In a bid to push development to the limits of zoning regulations, this application shows deference to the context of the site itself. Located in the heart of the Old Post Road Historic District, abutting a historic property, one of nine upon which the historic district's application to the National Register of Historic Places was anchored, site of the Garden of Revolutionary War Hero Samuel Smedley. The Historic District Commission was established precisely to combat this type of invasive development. This application is particularly brazen and should be met with a commensurate response. I have serious concerns about the proposed development as follows. Setback and width do not conform with the HEC guidelines. The proposed construction is directly adjacent to the Roland Homestead 952 Old Post Road one of the six properties that survived the burning of Fairfield in 1779 and the only one not located on the beach road. The proposal is non-conforming to, to the setbacks from the street and side yards in proportion to setbacks of adjacent buildings and would eliminate the vista of the Roland Homestead from the east, Old Post Road, and of the original main entrance to the historic property. Notably, the curated streetscape photos provided amid these pivotal views. HEC guidelines state new construction shall be designed so that the views from the public ways of existing buildings and structures is undiminished. To the extent possible, for example, a new construction will often need to be of lower height and with less massing and bulk in existing buildings and structures so that the view of these existing structures from the public ways is protected. Similarly, 
street setbacks and lot placement should not necessarily mirror existing buildings and structures, but should be designed to protect the historic views of such existing buildings and structures. Finally, to the extent possible, design of, of new buildings and structures should complement the historic character of the property in question. For example, if a building lot is created where a garden has historically existed, then a building with elements of a garden cottage retaining as much as possible of the historic grounds would be more appropriate than a formal house with a large footprint. The proposal would better align with the neighborhood streetscape were the number one front setback increased to 40, more than 45 feet in coalescence with other properties within the historic districts. Width of the main building reduced to under 28 feet in line with the abutting historic property and in adherence with the HCC recommendation that new construction should have less mass and bulk than existing buildings and structures. Garage and drive, driveway placement do not comply with HCC guidelines. HCC guidelines state garages shall complement the architectural style of the main building that they are intended to serve and be cited so as to be visually unobtrusive from a public way as possible. New buildings constructed on a subdivided lot or in a lot that has not had buildings or structures since the creation of the historic district shall be designed to retain as much as possible of the visual historic streetscape. HCC guidelines further establish for outbuilding that new construction should be cited so as not to disturb an established streetscape and preferably not within sight of a public way. <clears throat> On Old Post Road, garages are customarily situated behind main buildings out of view from the street. This proposal deviates from that standard instead of envisaging location next to a main building uh, in plain view from the street and adjacent to an existing garage. All facets atypical to the streetscape of Old Post Road it is noteworthy, however, that there is indeed space further back reflected on the site plan in which a garage could be situated. The proposed creation of a double driveway by locating a second one directly adjacent to that of 880 Old Post Road is additionally unsettling. Such a double driveway would be out of sync with the neighborhood and require an additional curb cut at the Old Post Road, Old Post Road and intersection, a site already problematic for public safety and close to a crosswalk. Furthermore, the removal of trees at the frontage of 920 Old Post Road would expose the property's dilapidated side, previously rear stockade fence unaddressed by the proposal to public view. The proposal would again, well, I'm sorry, the proposal would better align with the neighborhood streetscape where the three garage located behind the main building would not be visible from the street in kind with others on short end of Old Post Road. This would additionally create space for the relocation of the driveway. Number four, driveway situated to the west of the main property as opposed to abutting a neighborhood driveway in a similar fashion to other properties in the area. This development is to take place at the subdivided and rotated lot at 920 Old Post Road. It should fully comply with Historic District Commission guidelines as well as neighborhood standards. An example of new development, which indeed does is situated at 965 Old Post Road, that of a home and garage constructed in 2007. Finally, I'd like to gratefully appreciate the opportunity to speak at the HCC meeting on Thursday on this topic. Yours sincerely, Richard Cunningham. The next letter is from Jennifer Andreessen. Dear Mr. Cliver, I'm writing in opposition of the proposed construction of a new home and garage on the lot at 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield. First and foremost, this application is incomplete for a second time, and the HCC should not consider this application until it is submitted to the agency as a complete application. The photo of the home in the application does not include photos of the streetscape, photo of the home as it would look situated between 952 Old Post Road and 880 Old Post Road. One of the most critical aspects in assessing a new building in the HCC is how it will look in the streetscape. 
The application does not state the architectural style of the proposed home. It is critical that the design of the home fit in with this part of Old Post Road in HDC. Once the application is complete and ready for review, the HC should hold this application to the standard of 965 Old Post Road applicants application. This application reflect based, um, sorry, this application should be rejected based on the following. This number one, this home is too large for such a tiny parcel of property in the historic district. Number two, the applicant's proposed home and garage are not in line with the streetscape of Old Post Road. The application should follow the standards for the last new building, new built on our block of Old Post Road, 965 Old Post Road. 965 Old Post Road design is aligned with the neighboring homes as it is as wide as the neighboring home. The front setback, setback fits with the other properties on the block. The garage is behind the home and cannot be seen from the street and the design is aligned with the neighboring homes. Therefore, there's no impact on the streetscape of our block. Number three, if the HTC approves this applicant's proposed home, the HTC will set precedence. Owners of the of other HTC properties may begin to subdivide and build new homes on these tiny pieces of land, which will forever change the historic district. Number four, the garage does not comply with the HTC guidelines. The HTC recently rejected a proposed, proposed garage at 249 Beach Road, citing that it would change the street, streetscape it is not appropriate and that it takes away from the property. Therefore, the proposed garage for this property should be rejected. And number five, the applicant proposes a driveway next to the driveway, next to a driveway. The applicant proposes a driveway next to a driveway. This is not aligned with the design of our block of post road in any case, since the applicant did not submit streetscape photos, the streetscape of the double driveway cannot be assessed. Each and every one of us in the HCC take great pride in owning a piece of Fairfield's history. When each owner in the historic district decides to purchase a home here, we felt pride in taking on the responsibility of preserving Fairfield's history. We also agreed to follow the HCC rules and take on the additional costs of preserving our historic homes. If the HC allows this project to go forward, <clears throat> where are the rest of us working so hard to preserve following HEC rules and incurring extra costs to maintain the historic appropriateness of our properties. It is the role of the HEC to ensure that our historic districts are protected. As stated in the HEC handbook, Fairfield's historic districts and properties are special and protected places that tell our story as a community and make us proud of our town. They will do the same for generations of Fairfielders to come. This tiny sliver of land should not be used for building of any structure. It neither fits with the preservation of the historic district nor the historic look of that part of the old post road. As stated in the HCC handbook, new buildings constructed on a subdivided lot or on a lot that has not had buildings or structures since the creation of the historic district shall be designed to retain as much as possible of the visual historic streetscape. Thank you for, your, for the opportunity to provide a comment on this application, best regards, Jennifer Andreessen, 981 Old Post Road in Fairfield. The next letter is from Johan Andreessen, your Historic District Commission members and Chairman Claver. I am a Historic District Area Resident at 981 Old Post Road. I'm writing in strong opposition to the proposed construction of a new home on a small non-conforming lot at 920 Old Post Road. Based on the proposal, the size of the home is too large and it con contemplates an adjacent garage, which will be too close to the street and neighboring properties. This is not the beach area, and there's no reason to allow such exploitation of one of the most pre precious historic areas in Fairfield and even the country. Quite frankly, if this was to be approved by the HEC, the very existence and justification of the HEC would come into immediate question. While new construction shouldn't always be de declined, this type of, of attempt to blatant disregard for what the historic area is and should be per the HEC guidelines, which is what has kept this area such a beautiful and wonderful part of history for decades is frightening. In addition, to the above, it appears the application in front of the HCC is incomplete. 
Also, the placement of the garage will be in view, full view of Old Post Road, which is in violation of HTC guidelines. Even worse, we would put two garages immediately next to each other. The new garage of 920 Old Post Road would be immediately next to the existing garage of 880 Old Post Road, which would have a significant negative impact on the appearance of the surrounding district and would be unprecedented in the historic district and would be would set a bad precedent. The mass and setbacks in the main house would also significantly damage the overall appearance of the historic district and set a bad, a bad precedence for the future. Again, each area type construction with house after house closely abutting each other squeeze into maximize square footage and develop a profit on small and non-conforming lots has no place in the historic district. As such, I call on the commission to deny the, deny the application for certificate of appropriateness in order to protect and preserve the historic district against the excessive development contemplated at 920 Old Post Road, which is a core function of the commission. In addition to my written testimony, I'd like to welcome the opportunity to speak at Thursday's hearing. Best regards, Rohan Andreas. And finally, um, this is from the Old Post Road uh, Association. Dear Commissioners, we, the board members of the Old Post Road Area Association, write to you with the collective concerns from our neighboring regarding neighborhood regarding the current application at 920 Old Post Road that is before you. We do not oppose the development of a single family home on the lot, uh, on the lot 604A that is within the Old Post Road Historic District. We do however find the current application lacking necessary details and content for the commission and the public to render opinions as to the appropriateness of this project to be built in our historic district. As stated in the town of Fairfield's historic districts and properties handbook, the application must have complete sets of drawings to scale and a description of materials to be used. The sets must be complete, showing both existing and proposed conditions. The drawings in the application do not show the rear elevation of the house, and there is no drawing of the side or rear elevations of the garage. There is only the front elevation of the proposed garage. The application does not give any detailed description of the oval accent window in the front gable of the house. The application shows a sample of an aluminum gutter, but there is no drawing that shows any gutter or downspout locations. Copper gutters and downspouts are preferred in, his, in very few historic districts. Many neighbors are concerned about the style and location of the garage, it being too close to the street, the architecture not complementing the house, and that will neg it will negatively affect the streetscape. As stated in the FHDC handbook, garages, barns, and other outbuildings shall complement the architectural style of the main building that they are intended to serve and be cited so as to be as visually unobtrusive from a public way as possible. New buildings constructed, constructed on a subdivided lot or on a lot that does not have buildings or structures since the creation of the historic district shall be designed to retain as much as possible of the visual historic streetscape. In regards to the garage location, the owner could obtain a variance from the town, to set the garage further back from the street to make it less obtrusive from a public way. The house and garage could possibly be flipped in locations to allow the garage to be set back even further from the street. Side setback of the garage is listed on the survey of 18 feet where the minimum setback or zoning is 25 feet. Are the owners going to going to ZBA for variance? I refer you to the letter sent to the commission on January 3rd, 2022 from Mr. Richard Cunningham, 952 Old Post Road. This letter eloquently states many other legitimate concerns regarding 920 Old Post Road application. One major concern is that the front setback is only 30 feet. This is incongruous with the streetscape, other homes with exception of 952 Old Post Road. If the home at 920 Old Post Road is built with a, with a front setback at 30 feet. It will compete with a historically significant Andrew Rowland home at 952 Old Post Road. The Andrew Rowland home, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, dates back to 1768 
and by its age, one would expect it to be closer to the street. The proposed dwelling at 920 Old Post Road would better align with the neighborhood streetscape with a front setback increase to over 45 feet. In keeping with the other properties within the surrounding streetscape, HCC guidelines state, new construction shall be designed so that the views from public ways of existing buildings and structures is undiminished. We also find the siting of the house and the garage on this site is inappropriate for the Old Post Road Historic District. The handbook states, new buildings constructed on, constructed on a subdivided lot or a lot that has not had buildings or structures since the creation of the historic district shall be designed to retain as much possible of the visual historic streetscape. Established rhythms and location, massing height and bulk buildings and structures along the street should be maintained. In the more common case of new buildings or structures proposed for areas where no buildings or structures or only ancillary ones have stood since the creation of the historic district, care should be taken to design new buildings and structures that intrude as little as possible on the historic character of the district. We encourage you to deny this application without prejudice and allow the landowner to return to you with an appropriate application that addresses the above concerns. Thank you for your voluntary time and consideration. Sincerely, Dr. Henry Backey, President, 388 Old Post Road, uh, Ms. Karen Wingett, uh, Vice President, 458 Old Post Road, Ms. Stacy Fama, Secretary, 455 Old Post Road, and Mr. Walter Shaw, Treasurer, 487 Old Post Road. Okay. Everybody still with us? Um, and um, with that, I'm going to ask if uh, there's anyone in the um, in the meeting who would like to speak in favor of this application, or anyone from the public who would like to oppose, speak against this application. We we have. Um, I'd like to speak against this application, if I if I may. Um, I'm okay, uh, Richard Cunningham. Yeah, I, I'm Richard Cunningham. I'm the uh, uh, the other resident and owner of uh, 952. Old Post Road, um, the Roland Homestead, the property directly um, abutting the lot in question. Um, as you'll be okay. aware, the... Mr. Cunningham, you, I'm just going to let you know that you have. I'm going to give you five minutes to speak, so that we oh. can let other people speak. Okay, I'll be Thank you. Um, Yeah, as you're aware, the applicants are proposing building a uh, a property uh, within seven feet of my lot line, and then into that setback, inserting air conditioning units and one with assumed concrete pads as well. Um, the Old Post Road neighbours bandied together somewhat 60 years ago and um, applied for the National Register of Historic Places. At that time, they were aware, they were concerned about invasive development. They wanted to maintain the historic fabric of the neighbourhood. Um, and that movement is what led to the creation of this commission. It's also what led to uh, the uh, supplemental governance requirement for the certificates of appropriateness, uh, which are intended to uh, kind of prevent invasive or out of um, out of context development kind of in our neighborhood. Um, that sub-run governance only works if it's applied equally uh, to all property owners. Uh, in this case, there's uh, there's a uh, there's an issue of um, equity. That's uh, I think uh, a number of people have already referred to the development at 965 Old Post Road, which was the most recent new development on our block. It's diagonally opposite uh, the lot in question. Uh, embedded within this proposal are requests for exemptions to guidelines, which were not granted um, to other property owners. Um, this uh, proposal is really a, a, an attempt to force a square peg uh, through a round hole. Uh, the round hole uh, is the lot itself and its location. Uh, the lot was subdivided from 880 Old Post Road, a corner lot facing the Y. Uh, it was subdivided in a way to be non-conforming, so it's L-shaped, but that was that was by design. Um, and it's been a back garden since the 1600s. Um, the location, you've heard it's in the heart of the historic district. It's next to a historic property, the Roland Homestead, uh, which is you know, one of six properties that survived the burning of Fairfield. Um, the only one on Old Post Road, therefore making it the oldest property on Old Post Road. Uh, the Run and Homestead is also only one of nine properties that underpin the district's application itself to the National Register of Historic uh, of Places. 
and the properties of historical significance uh, constructed for Andrew Rowland, who was a financier of the Revolutionary War, uh, and for Elizabeth Fitch, who was the daughter of the British governor at the time. Um, and also she's better known for her role in uh, the French and Indian Wars in placing chicken feathers in the recruits hats. So that's her brother when he led them into Fort Creole in New York uh, was mocked and referred to as a macaroni. You're probably wondering to yourself why I'm citing you the, the kind of lyrics to Yankee Doodle Dandy. There are only two properties in the United States that are directly linked to that song. Uh, that song is a Connecticut state song. Uh, and the Roland Homestead is the only property in Connecticut that's actually linked to linked to that song and that piece of history. Now, back to the lot itself of 920 Old Post Road, that lot too is steeped in history. I think it was mentioned earlier that it was originally owned uh, by Samuel Smedley, who was a Revolutionary War hero. Uh, he's a favorite pr famous privateer, ship's captain. Um, he uh, and Andrew Rowland, who were both privateers, used that garden kind of in question. Uh, for actually some of the founding moments for what became the US Navy. Uh, eventually, uh, at the time it was called the, the Continental A Navy, uh, where they actually exchanged crew members uh, together. Uh, and as a result, Samuel Smedley captured nine British warships, which was a really significant contribution to the American Revolutionary War. Um, and as a result of that, he was nominated by George Washington as the first federal customs officer uh, for the area, which was a very, very significant appointment at the time. Um, why am I telling you this? Uh, this is far from a vanilla lot. Uh, I think it's been characterized uh, as such, uh, and that's really very much incorrect. This is a lot that's uh, a garden lot. It's been subdivided in an irregular fashion. It's right in the heart of the historic district next to a historic property, and it's of historic significance uh, itself. Uh, now to the square peg. Uh, the guidelines are really very clear. Uh, as to what should take place with this type of development with a garden lot that's been kind of carved out of another lot um, and is placed next to uh, um, existing buildings, the recommendations are for a cottage. And kind of let me pause there and anchor for a second. That's what the recommendations say. And I think even the, uh, the, the, the architect or the designer earlier mentioned that um, if uh, you know, if they were to follow the guidelines, that only a thousand foot property would probably work on that on that lot. Well, that's exactly what the uh, guidelines envisage, and I think we all know that's probably a little bit unrealistic. But so too is this application itself. Uh, it's been designed to the zoning regulations to develop out every single possible square inch um, for the lot, with deference to the, the the setting, with deference to the location, to the point of absurdity. Uh, if you look at the design of the property on the site plan, it's triangular. Now, there are four major uh, disjunctures from the HCC guidelines. I think it's been brought up already about the front setback, typically 46 to 65 feet along all of Old Post Road. Um, yes, the, the Roland Homestead itself is an exception. Um, it dates from 1759 and was constructed. Actually, there's no records of its actual construction. Um, but it was obviously grandfathered in. What would be appropriate here from a setback perspective would be to follow the precedence already set by the construction, which was approved at 965 Old Post Road, which is diagonally opposite the, the lot in question. That setback was 55 feet. Um, secondarily, regarding the width of the property, uh, the applicants have decided to anchor their development on the Roland Homestead by building within seven feet of the uh, lot line. The Roland Heads homestead has a width of 28 feet. The uh, applicants are proposing a 39 feet width to their property, and frankly, it would it would eclipse the Roland homestead. Uh, what would be appropriate here would be for the property to have a width of less than uh, 28 feet, 27 feet um, or less. You've heard already about the garage and its location, um, which breaks with neighborhood standards. Uh, that appears to be as a result of this attempt to absolutely max out the development of the lot. And it's also led to this absurdity um, of the driveway location, which is out of sync with surrounding properties. Both of those are kind of major deviations from um, historic district um, guidelines. I would note that on the site plan that there's more than ample space further back in which a garage could be located. And all of these kind of irregular design features seem to be driven by this urgency um, a necessity to max out the development of the lot, which again is incongruous with the, the, uh, the incongruous with the streetscape of the, the neighbourhood. Um, in, in summary, there are some really significant errors 
um, areas of non-compliance uh, with this application. On that basis alone, uh, I think it should be denied without prejudice. Um, if you're looking for secondary reasons, I think there's also an issue of equity here. Um, were these exemptions granted for 920 Old Post Road, uh, that would be a, a serious kind of issue given that the exactly similar or similar exemptions were not granted to previous property owners, such as those that constructed 965 Old Post Road. Um, and there's also a question of, of precedence here. Um, but if in this case we allow a property owner to build uh, on Old Post Road with a setback of 30 feet, which is completely misaligned with the streetscape, um, if we allow them to build out of scale with the budding properties, if we allow them to build with uh, driveways that are out of sync, uh, if we allow them to build uh, with garages that are abutting the properties in plain view of the street, knowing that all of those things are against the guidelines, we're kind of setting precedents kind of for, with, for the future. Um, and, and with that, I'd like to uh, just point out that I'm aware that there are other neighbours who uh, would also kind of like to speak uh, that are also on the call today. So I would uh, be grateful if you would grant them, um, such as the Andreasons, the, the opportunity to speak as well. Thank you. You want me to go next? Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Yeah, so I'm Johan Andres, and I'm on uh, 981 Old Post Road. Uh, I've been here for uh, a little over eight years now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to, to this proposed development as well. Uh, you know, I, I think in addition to what I stated in my letter, uh, just for the record, I, I I was not contacted by by the Montanis or or um, uh, the architect. Uh, I'm not aware of any neighbors that actually was, uh, and and I agree. I don't think the the statement about the uh, where this house is situated on the on the plot versus uh, other houses in the neighborhood is correct. Um, uh, the, the, I think the real issue, right, is that, you know, there's a density issue. I think, uh, you know, this, 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 this is, I mean, it, it, if, if somebody want to buy, you know, this is what's going on in the beach area, right? I mean, the, 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 there isn't a picture of what this is going to look like, but, you know, you, you, you can all walk down Penfield Road, road <laughs> down in the beach area, and you will see, exactly what this is going to look like and you know that's why i would recommend my recommendation would be to the montanis to go buy a lot down there build their house on on the point two acre lot uh you know that 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 fills up the entire property the the historic district is not the place uh it, it, i think you could argue you know what should or could be built on this plot if anything uh, I heard that what 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 would the only thing that would fit is a 600 square foot house uh, with a garage in the back. That's what meets the guidelines. Well, build that. <laughs> you know, I don't know why you would buy a lot with the expectation that uh, you know the historic district is going to apply beach area standards, uh, which would yeah invalidate the whole purpose of the historic district and this commission. Uh, I, I find it preposterous. Um, you know that oh this is the only way to do it. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's the opposite, you know, the, the, there is a way to do it, do it that way. Um, I, I think it, the, the, so the problem is that, right? I, I, the setback from the street is an issue uh, as much as the setback on the sides. I mean, there's going to be a, a combined 15 feet on like five feet on one side and 10 feet on the other side, two garages next to each other. There was a mentioning by the architect about trying to screen this out with with an head this is not the air conditioner that can be screened out this is a complete new house massive house with a with a garage next to it uh you know looking yes there are some examples where garages you know are are, are next to houses in the old post road but there's also the handbook that says that shouldn't be the case why why would we ever grant uh uh uh, uh you know an, an exception to that rule for a new build um and, and and I don't know that if you realize just how close this house would be to 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 uh, Mr. Cunningham's Cunningham's house. I mean, it's it it's it's just row, house row, house after house. It it just, I mean, it would be terrible, 
right? I mean, we could fit, if you if we wanted, we could all subdivide and we could fit another 10 houses on this section of Gold Post Road. But, you know, then, then let's bury this commission. Let, let's get rid of this third district. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to preserve and protect. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously this is, this is, um, you know, the, the building allowing this construction, right, would destroy not only the plot where, where it's supposed to be built, but also the two uh, adjacent houses, as well as the entire, this, this part of Opus Road, which is, I think is one of the most beautiful uh, parts of the town. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, 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 I can't, I, I, I'm terrified, honestly. Uh, I, I'm terrified that that this lot was bought by somebody who thought they could build this big of a house and just put a garage next to it, and and, and says that's the only way to do it. Uh, although they can, they they also said that all that could actually fit, if you were to follow the guidelines, is 600 feet. But that's for some reason is not the option, right? It's it's it. it this is terrifying. I, I I can't believe that we're even hearing or listening to this. Uh, the 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 purpose of the historic commission, right, is not to provide accommodations for the Montanis to build a dream house, uh, you know, in, in the historic district. Okay, there's plenty of plots where they can go build their dream home. That's not it. If they love this area so much, they could have stayed uh, in, in the two houses down in the house that they did own that they did renovate. That they sold for a profit, they could have stayed there. They, you know, now wanted to come back, buy this little lot, and think that they can, you know, construct the monstrosis building. Okay, that doesn't work. Uh, it, you know, if that works, there is no historic district anymore. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll end with that. Um, but um, you know, I appreciate the time to speak. But th this is, it's not. <laughs> If you allow this to go forward, there is no more historic district. It doesn't fit the guidelines. It's why you would allow an exception like this for something like this. I mean, there is nothing. And with that, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Adam, I think you're still muted. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Anderson. I didn't realize I was muted. Um, would anyone else from the uh, public care to speak in opposition to this uh, application? You can raise your hand or, okay, I'm not seeing anyone. Um, Brian, would you? like to comment or respond to any of the uh, statements that have been made? Um, no, I read my notes here. Uh, obviously, I mean, I've been in enough of these meetings. I know it's going to get reconvened and we're not voting on it tonight. So these are all things that we can uh, we can address. Uh, the only thing that I will say, which I, I could be wrong and I could be dead wrong, but I believe I had a conversation with the Montanis that part of one of the questions was from the, the neighbor who actually subdivided the uh, property in regards to the basketball court. I believe it was a stipulation of the actual sale that they needed to remove the piece of basketball court that's on their piece of property. Again, I, I'm not sure how what bearing that has. I mean, obviously, it's not it, it doesn't have to do with this piece of property. And I could be wrong in, in my mis my understanding of, of that conversation. But I thought it was a stipulation that they needed to remove their they're part of the uh, of the basketball court also as part of the sale of the land, but I could be wrong. Uh, other than that, like I said, I have my list here. Um, it's it, a lot of the the comments were um, in relation to the the questions that the board members had. So we'll we can address those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seems like the least of your concerns is a basketball court at this point. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, no one else would like to speak and against them. Uh, commissioners, any of the commissioners, would you care to make any comments? Okay, then the uh, hearing's closed. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Everybody.
Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Um, I'll circle back. I don't see anyone new in the meeting, but I'll circle back one last time to uh, um, Marshall O'Connell, 470 Pequot Avenue in Southport for property located at 470 Pequot Avenue in Southport for a new fence and gate. And it doesn't look like anyone is here to present that one. So we'll move on um, to the considerations of uh, the hearings. We'll start with um, uh, John and Rachel uh, Blaschke, 323 Old Post Road in Fairfield, the property located at 323 Old Post Road in Fairfield for a new condensing units. And um, just keep in mind, none of the um, uh, alternates will be voting tonight as we have a full commission and nobody's recusing themselves. So can I get a motion, please? This is Art Adam. I would uh, make a motion to approve um, that item as presented with the uh, stipulation that uh, uh, shrubbery screening Okay. Can we get a second? I'll second that. Rosina seconds. Discussion? No discussion? Okay, let's take the vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions, no abstentions, motion passes unanimously. Okay, next item on the agenda is Kevin Liniak, 72 Willow Street in South Fork, for property located at 72 Willow Street in South Fork. For A, move pool to previously approved location. B, move koi pond to previously approved location, from previously approved location. C, add outdoor shower and move jacuzzi and pool equipment from previously approved location. D, move pool fence hedge or driveway. E, add golf putting green. F, change previously approved pool bluestone deck size and location. G, add bluestone paver pass, barn, <clears throat> and around koi pond. H, add one bluestone paver to entrance to existing terrace. And I, change shape to existing terrace bed adjacent to previously approved driveway. Can I get a motion, please? I'll make the motion um, to approve A through I. And I'd second that motion. Thank you, Paragraph. Seconding. Sorry, who's second? George. George, you're, you're not voting. Sorry, George, you're not voting. The alternates are not. Second, then. All right, Darren will second. Discussion? No discussion? Um, okay. Um, nobody has an issue with the, with the putting green? I'm going to bring it up. It's like. Okay. All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? None opposed? No abstentions? Motion passing unanimously. Uh, last item is David and Tina Montani, 920 Old Post Road for property located at 920 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, remove existing shed and basketball court, B, construct new single family home and detached garage, C, install new 20 by 40 asphalt driveway, D, e, install new fence along front of property, E, install new old Chicago used brick walkways, and F, install new AC condensing units. And I get a first uh, motion, please. Yeah, um, Chris here. I'll make a motion to uh, deny items. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. 
items a, a and f a through f, f um as presented um with without prejudice uh our key advantage seconds, seconds that second. Okay, Art seconds discussion. So. Or do we need any more discussion? It seems like there's a lot of opposition to, to announcing just a, a whole host of issues with this particular um, application. I yeah. do want to bring up, Adam, that uh, there was some discussion among some of the commissioners about. Uh, uh, a sitescape or showing uh oh poles. Oh, God, it was so this, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh poles. They, um in the past we've had uh you know poles erected on the site so you can sort of see the ridge line um in the corners of the house and it sort of gives you just a th yeah like no Chris Shea mentioned that. No, I I think I don't I don't have an issue with that. I don't it was there, there was some, uh, I, I think Chris is fine on that. Uh, there was the discussion on showing uh, the streetscape or something. Is that, is, is that, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm against that. I'm just saying, is that something within our purview, making a, a, a petitioner do that? Is, um, Adam, yeah, if you don't mind is. me jumping in there. Um, a ahead. lot of sure. HTCs do this actually. And it was something that I had brought up when we were talking about the handbook. Sometimes I find, I personally find it really helpful when uh, the petition is coming from in front of us and we have pictures of the abutting um, neighbors and maybe like, for example, fences are a good example of this. What fences are next to these? Is it going to be an issue or is it going to look weird? Is it in keeping with the other fences in the neighborhood? So sometimes having streetscape shots of just like the three houses in a row or from across the street and just kind of a varied idea of what's going on in the district really does help when it comes to these things. Um, the other thing that I think can be very helpful in particular instances like this is if they have some kind of mock-up of what the house will look like and drop it in between the existing houses so that we can actually see how it's going to look and how it's going to change the streetscape of that district. Um, Westport does this. Um, I think Weathersfield does. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm so there's other places that, that I, I do just... this. Yeah. That's yeah. that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, good. And there there have been a number of applications, um, Arthur, in the in this district, um, presented by other architects that do go ahead and and take the time to create maybe with a Photoshop um, imagery. They they will create uh, you know a proposed streetscape, and it's it is very helpful to see that. Okay, context. good. Yeah, it must, yeah. must not have been a while because I, I don't think I, I'd seen one since I joined, but thank you all for that. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, there aren't a whole lot of new houses proposed in, in the district, so that could be yeah. why. But it's, it's often, it's nice and to see help for fences too, just like any big changes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it could just be a 2D drawing, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be 3D. Oh, no. Alexander, Alexander, grow up. All right. Any other, any other discussion? Yes. I don't want to hear. Okay. Let's take a vote then. All in favor? This is so unfair. Alexander, is that? Okay. Opposed? No opposition. Abstentions. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Hey, um, Adam, a uh, point of order. Yep. Point of, I I think that we yeah. should. I'd like to propose a motion to deny. Um, Four seventy Pequot Avenue, without prejudice, since it was noticed to be um, presented and it wasn't presented. Okay, yes, I think you're right. Um, okay. 
Uh, Marshall O'Connell, 470 Pequot Avenue in Southport for property located at 470 Pequot Avenue for a new fencing gate. Can I have a motion, please? Yeah, I, I'll make that motion to deny that application without prejudice. Second. Second. Yep. Darren Raymond Lock. Darren seconds. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions, no. Abstentions, no. Opposed, so the motion passes. Very good. Okay, let's um, uh, approve the minutes from December. Um, we have, I believe, Art. Rosina, Chris, George, Jim, and Alyssa. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve. Rosina? In a second? Oh, George, I'll, now's your chance. I'll second that. Is that Jim? Yep. Any discussion? All right, no discussion, all in favor? Okay, and the motion passes unanimously. No opposed. Um, chairman's report, I have no repairs this month, uh, no violations. Um, old business, I know I, Darren has mentioned that she, she, we, we have nothing on her end anyway from the handbook provisions, and I don't have anything yet either. Still gonna be on the agenda, so <laughs> intentionally we'll We'll get somewhere with it. Unless you have anything, uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm waiting for other people's inputs. I know um, Rosina sent me something. I think last month um, that I haven't. I have okay. it, but I haven't yet gotten to it to um, put into the handbook because I've been looking over all the comments we made during our session um, and kind of addressing those. Okay. Excellent. So. I mean, one one issue um, under new business does pertain to the to the handbook to some extent. Um, Greenfield Hill, or well, the tents in general. Um, the Greenfield Hill Church um, has put up tents for their youth group behind the barn. They put up like four tents, um, and it, they've been up for a while. And, and just recently, um, it's come to my attention, and so I had them write write a letter again. Saying that they want to put these tents up in for how long? Um, um, neighbors, I think. George, hey, George, could you mute yourself? I got. Um, and um, so the neighbor is it was is is um, a little upset by. Well, maybe not a little more than a little about the tents because they feel like they're being used the way they're they say they're being used and it's they're unsightly and all that. Um, you know, and we had the same issue in Southport where the Southport school has put up tents and it's, you know, under the um, um the idea that these tents are helping COVID somehow and keeping kids, you know, outside in more ventilated spaces. So I think um as a commission, we need to sort of address the, this tent issue because um, in some cases, it, it's sort of a land grab, um, you know, and I am, I'm, I know, for instance, I was talking to to someone else about about tents um, and they wanted to put up, you know, we're considering putting up a tent for uh, maintenance and heating it and having flaps on it and everything. And clearly that that doesn't comply as a, as a necessary um, um, or needed a needed tent for COVID and you know they just needed more space. So they wanted to create this, you know, put up this tent in the parking lot. And uh, so that wasn't gonna fly. But I guess um, I just want thoughts on on you know what people people's views are on on these tents and how the commission should handle it. Um, Thoughts, anyone? In normal circumstances, I would suggest that we have some, and I think I said this during our meeting on the handbook too, 
um, that there be some clause where, you know, a certain amount of time, they don't need to come before the commission because they're temporary, like 30 days or less or whatever, which is what a lot of other commissions do, you know, temporary string lights for 30 yeah. days or less, tents, 30 days or less. Um, they give them kind of like a, an approval up to 30 days. And if it's going to be up longer for 30, than 30 days, they have to come to the commission for approval. I think in normal circumstances, for, for you know, notwithstanding a pandemic, um, that's something we should think about. Yeah. Um, yeah, we need to, I think we need some sort of language in the, in the handbook to at least clarify how people need to approach tents. Because these are temporary structures until, you know, the Greenfield Road Church has been up for a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, are they are they temporary anymore, or are they not going away? You know. So. Right. I was thinking the same thing: the thirty days and temporary, but but given the fact that we only meet once a month, uh, how do they how do they you know re up the uh, the temporary certificate? Within that time frame, well, I think the thirty days would be granted just like a, like the chairman would give thirty days, and then Other after that, if they wanted to go it. longer than thirty days, it would just yeah. be a staff write-off okay. sort of thing, and yeah, and not require. Yeah, how right? That's good. which yeah. is like, the whole okay. purpose. Um, you know, at the moment, I'm just what I'm doing is I, I'm just asking people, you know, whoever. When they, and when it comes to, to uh, my attention, you know, but the problem is that some of these things are going on and we, we don't find out about it until I don't find out about it until a year later. And something else, you know, the neighbor, you know, is, is upset and brings it to my attention and now the church has to address it. Or whoever, um, in this case, the church, <clears throat> um, you know, and they're going to, they, they. Just I have them write me a letter and, and have a site plan showing the location of the tents and um, the description of, of um, the intent of the use and for how long they're going to be there. You know, just so we can keep track can of go it. For that. I think. Um, okay. But I think you know the handbook just I think I think it, it needs to be specific. You know, just so there's it's, people know that if you're going to put a tent up. It does need to come before the commission, or at the very least, a, a, no, a, a thirty-day approval by staff. Okay. So the, um, you know, I, I happen to be a member of the church, so I have to be a, a little bit careful about not sounding like I'm leaning favoritively on on this. However, I mean, I think it is the church's property and it, and it is, there is, this is a pandemic and they, the only reason the tents were erected was so that the youth groups could meet in a safe environment. And um, I don't really see what harm it, it's causing anybody to have a a few tents be behind the barn, and they're not really even visible from a public way. They're they're barely visible from um, Old Academy Road. If you drive past very slowly, you might glimpse one or two of them. So, um, and they they're clearly there. They're only there because of the pandemic. They've never used them before. Um, and it's be you know it's because it's winter, and the and it's a pan, there's a pandemic and they can't safely meet inside. Um, so, I think we should be very lenient with with them and allow them to, to do this unless there's some, undue harm, being caused that I'm not aware of. I mean, I would agree 100%. I mean, I am. There's always going to be someone who, it, not always, but in this case, there's someone who's a neighbor is 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 not. He doesn't think that the tents are being used, um, the way they were intended to be used. But that's neither here or there. You know, if the if the reverend's going to tell me that their intention is to use these tents 
and they're going to be up for X amount of time, and it's because of the COVID and they need to be outdoor space. You know, I'm not going to put, we can't police it, and I just have to take her word for it. And, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, one other thing that, as long as we're going along this kind of temporary um, structure, I've often had a a real issue with the, I think there's at least four storage containers um, invisible from a public way, both on Pequot and Westway at the Pequot Library. Um, and they're very unsightly. And let's face it, they're not mm -hmm. temporary. They've been there for 10 years. And I don't think they should. Yeah, you're right. I think they need to come before the commission and request a certificate of appropriateness for them or move them. I, I think it's a violation. Do you know they, what they, they, you know what they are? are they I think like, they use them they to store, like book sale? I think they use them for their book sale. I'm not sure, but that's what yeah. I think they're for. But the, I, they don't belong in that. That's like the jewel of the, you know, no, you're right. historic district. It's a good, it's a good point. They're really inappropriate. I, you know, I think everyone kind of thinks, well, they're temporary, but they're not temporary. They've been there for 10 years. I think. Chris, what are they again? They're right. these large yellow storage containers that. Oh, yeah. Like shipping containers. And right. They're, yeah. They're stacked up. There's like, I think there's four of them. Yeah. And, those are the containers at the. Uh, Northeast corner of the Pequot Library property, right at the head of the driveway yeah. as you're driving in. Uh, I don't think it's northeast, but it's it's yeah, it's behind the it's behind the library. Yeah, as far away from it, the corner it, of Westway it, and Pequot as you can be. Yeah. It actually, looks like eight, eight international shipping containers that have seen better days. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that, yeah, I mean, we should no, address that as well in our handbook, or, or um, maybe there should be a violation, or we should ask them to come in for a certificate of appropriateness or something. Unless maybe they're grandfathered in, and I'm maybe I'm out of line. I'm I'm not sure. No, you're probably not out of line, no. Chris. Um, does anyone know no, offhand no. who's the president of the library? Yeah, Nelson. Nelson North. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but maybe you want to, you, you want to, it's, it's, um, it, it's, uh, Nelson, I can't remember her name, but she's, she's Stephanie, a, Stephanie Coakley is the manager, right? Stephanie, Stephanie Coakley, yeah, that's she's the person. Well, Nelson's, the pres, Nelson's the president of the, of the board. Okay, I, I mean, I, it, I don't know either. I mean, I'm, I've met Nelson, I don't know Steph, but know. maybe Steph, if somebody Stephanie knows the them who, personally. Can can at least have a conversation or call them or email them and say, you know, it, it was brought up and let's, you know, maybe they could say, oh, gee, we, you know, we'll move them or we were meaning to, and then, you know, if they don't, we could we could cite I, them. I, I, I know them both. I know them both very well. I was on the board of the library, but the the uh, those those containers have have to have been there. I think uh, Chris is being really generous. I think we're probably it's it's more like twenty years that they've been there. Is such a thing as uh, as <laughs> is it is it is it grandfathered? <laughs> you know, uh, I can tell you that they are they are that's where they put all the books uh, that they use for the for the book sale, um, and and that's where they cycle them through the library. Well, but it, the question is, is it a structure? Uh huh. Is it appropriate? Well, it, the question is, is it appropriate? Yeah. Well, first, it's got to be a structure. <laughs> and we, we could all agree it's inappropriate, but that's a, to me, it seems, unless I don't know, I don't have a good idea what they look like, but is, don't they have all shipping shipping containers? Like Excuse me, everybody. Ones. I actually have to go. I'm sorry. Have a good night. night. Bye, Alyssa. Good. Thank you. Have a I mean, we could call them structures. I mean, they're 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 certainly not temporary if they've been there for twenty years, but so that they they can't fall under the auspices of a a temporary installation. 
they, they should be screened. I guess if they want to have something at, like that, at a I guess minimum, should they have should be screened. Somehow. Yeah. I think but that's, not so that's probably a good. I mean, I can certainly talk to Stephanie or Nelson, either one of them. I know them both. Um, you know, I was on the board for like 10, eight or 10 years. Uh, yeah, I don't see why they would object if, if, if we could agree that they should be screened. I mean, it beats having to move them. I think they would gladly screen them versus an alternative, which would be more, much more disruptive. No, uh, I think they should come. Like, I think it should it should come before the commission as a application for a certificate of appropriateness. Okay, and I, I don't object to that. Fair enough. How do you want, do you want me to deal with it? Or you can you can do if you want to talk to Stephanie. Go you know have a discussion with her. Um, ultimately, she's going to have to talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, well, then you go for and I've talked to her many times. Then go for it. Then you can talk to her. Okay. Okay. Sometimes everything falls on your right. head. I was trying to save you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You could at least start to get the ball rolling for me. And then yeah, at know. least to do it it's, informally. It's up to you. I mean, yeah. yeah. Whatever you want. You don't, if you don't mind reaching out to, if you don't mind reaching out to Stephanie and having a discussion and then, and then we can go from there. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is one task we could take off your plate for a minute. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> That's just, you know. Excellent. Thanks, George. Yeah. All right. Any, any other uh, new business that anyone wants to bring up? In addition to this. Hey, um, Darren, is there is there a way you could send along a kind of a working draft of the updated handbook so I could look at it? Sure. Sure. Great. I'd love to uh, see uh, that. Thank you. Yeah, um, just give me a few days so that I yeah. make my notes more understandable. Sure. Adam, did the presentation that we had with the state go up on the site? Yeah. Okay. okay. I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, what with the uh, with um, what's your name? Um, I had looked for it a while ago, but I I'll go back. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. it should be on there as a special meeting. Yep. Although the materials, I don't think she ever sent me. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, she was going to send I a PowerPoint. She was going to send her send her PowerPoint. You were going to put it up on the site the last week. Talk. Yeah, she never. She never. I, 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 I asked her, but she never. I'm sorry, I, I haven't seen that either, Adam. I'll look and see if I have it. If I have it, I'll forward it to you, Adam, because I know she sent me a working copy of it before oh, okay. they actually gave the presentation. Excellent. In terms of the handbook, if anybody, there was a couple of people who were going to send me bits for it. Um, if you guys haven't done that, when you get a second, can you send it to me? Because that's kind of what's holding me up from doing some of the other parts. You and mind, I like it off my plate. <laughs> Honestly. You like mine, Darren? <laughs> Sorry? I, I s s s sent you a bio about a month ago. Did you get it? Oh, yes, I got that. I submitted that to the state because that was for the um, annual report. Right, right. Which is all we're up to date on all of that. I submitted the last three years of annual reports. So we, we're back in compliance. Good. At least for that part. Which is great. Um, yeah, there's other things that we should probably do to re retain CLG compliance, but that might be another conversation. But right now I'm working on the handbook. Oh. And so I'd like to see the back end of that sometime before I turn <laughs> 40. Um, <laughs> I do got years. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Let's go with that. I turned 20, 28 for the 12th year this year. So it was so good. I might do it again next year. <laughs> there you go. Um, nice. Yeah, but Chris, I'll I'll send you a copy. Um, I can send you one now if you don't mind my notes just being jotted in the corner. Yeah. 
I think you're muted. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll I'll look it over as soon as I get okay. it. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Just need a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Make it. I'll second it. <laughs> who made okay, who made the motion? Darren did. <laughs> Darren made Christina the motion. Seconded. George second. George All was able favor. to second something tonight. Hey, whatever. Whatever yeah, you want. Good job. <laughs> All right. Thank you.